Parsons problems. This is a way to teach coding that has a lot going for it. So I have an example, but before that, let's look at what this does for us. The way to think about Parsons problems is it's kind of like a word jumble if you've ever had to organize a, a bucket of words into a sentence. Same idea here. We're going to have lines of code and the learner needs to order them in such a way as to meet some goal. The nice thing with this is that it's fun and interactive, right? You know, it definitely introduces an element of playfulness to the coding. Uh, it also makes sure that the learner doesn't get totally overwhelmed when they're learning how to code, right? So if we have these pieces and you just need to um, know how to order them, that's a good practice in understanding uh, control flow, data dependencies, things like that. It avoids having that deer in the headlights, blank page kind of terror when you're starting a problem and don't know where to go from there. So there's a lot to say for these Parsons problems. Got an example here, this is in R. So um, the idea here is that we have a few lines of code, and if you are a dplyr or an R user, you'll know that we might have a couple distractors or incorrect answers in the block, i.e. you don't necessarily need to use all those blocks to get to the correct answer. But really what you would do is drag and drop from that left box to the right box, there are some tools online to build things like this that are interactive. I don't know really much about them. Uh, the ones in JavaScript, so if you are a JavaScript person and you figure it out, then hey, that's great and let's get in touch. Uh, anyway, so if you want to, if you're an R user, all the slides to download here, you can check that out. Or just take a moment to consider how you might navigate this and do that drag and drop. Got the answer here on the next slide. So what we've done is take those blocks again if we go back and I drag them over there. You'll also see that if you don't know R, dplyr, R, you know, usually there's there's gonna be an indentation with the the lines, and that's not absolutely necessary like it is in Python but it's just good practice. So an added thing with Parsons problems is uh, allowing students to indent the blocks as they're arranging them. But this is the basic idea where you have these blocks, sometimes you have distractors, and student will drag and drop them. So there's really a lot going for them. It, it seems like a simple concept, but you know when you start to learn how to code or teach how to code, this isn't always apparent to make assessments in a fun and engaging way like this. So hats off to the creator, one of whom is Parsons. I've got the original paper right here on uh, where this all came to be. And the way I learned about this was from this Teaching Tech Together book by Greg Wilson, which I can't recommend enough if you're interested in teaching how to code, just teaching technology in general. This book has so much going for it. It's really one of a kind. Uh, so two good resources there, and I'm kind of a resource too. You've got my information here. We can connect on LinkedIn, uh, visit my site, all that. I've got lots of resources on teaching analytics, teaching how to code, data in general, data education. So thank you very much for watching.